Okay, the next step is once you have the two backer rods ready to go, you need to get the tape ready. So you need to make pieces so that you could uh, wrap the ear to the uh, to the backer rod. So what I want to do is I'm using two inch Elasticon, I'm sorry, two inch Kindle porous tape. But you're gonna make this uh, into two pieces by doing this. So you want to cut this first. This could actually be ripped. This is gonna be for one ear, this would be for the other. This is the tip. So I place this here on the uh, roomy table so I have it so when I need it, I can reach and get it. The next part is going to be the middle part. So it should be a little bit longer than the tip. So I'll go about that length. Once again, you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to cut this first and then split it in half to make two. And that would make it one inch total per uh, piece. So I like to put that next to it so it's all in order. Next one is gonna be the uh, base piece. So it's gonna be even longer than the middle. So right there is good. I'm gonna cut this. Okay. Split this in half, and that will be for my base. What I like to do is where the base piece is, I want to actually uh, use Elasticon to reinforce what I did on the base. So I'm just going to pull this Elasticon to about the same length. This is real stretchy though. So I'm going to just eyeball it and uh, go about right about here, cut it. So I'm going to put it right next to the base because that's going to go over this. And again, repeat the process for the other ear. Match it with the other piece. And this will make my last piece for, uh, for pulling tape before bracing. The next piece is going to be the brace. The brace is to put the ears parallel with one another. So what I want to do is I'm going to get my uh, Kendall Porce tape. I'm going to go pretty long here. I'm going to go about this long. I'm going to cut it, cut it right over here. I'm going to split this in half. You only need one piece, but it's good to have another one on hand if, if you mess up. So I'll put this over here as a, as a standby, but this would be my, my piece for bracing the ears. So I'm gonna put this over here. And now I can get started with putting the backer rod in the ear and start using these pieces. Go ahead, pause. Okay, what you wanna do is once you have this piece ready, you're gonna slide this gauze piece straight into the ear. So the puppy has to stay still. And what I'm gonna do is with my left hand, on her left ear, I'm gonna pull up and I'm gonna then slide this all the way into her ear, just like that. So the gauze is stuffed in, stuffed in there. You won't be able to see it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and place the ear just like this. Once it's like this, I'm gonna take the middle piece that I've already made for myself, start with this middle part of the uh, of the backer rod and right in the middle of the ear, this is that middle piece I was talking about, you're going to then go towards the front direction, make a slight fold, go back over again where the, where the tape is and just do it a, a few times. The whole time you're not going to make this tight because this is flesh and if you make it tight you, can have, you will have create circulation problems to the puppy's ear and that's not good. And then you want to just press the ear to the uh, backer rod. The next piece is the most important piece. What you want to do is take the longer piece. This is the brace piece I was talking about. And I want to stick it right at the very bottom of the uh, sticky side out of the backer rod as a starting point. I'm going to press it just like this so both glue of the tape on sticky side out and this Kindle tape is stuck together. 
Now what I'm going to do is with my right hand I'm going to stretch up. I'm going to go under, just like the up and under, and I'm going to go back over where I started, just like this, completely stretched. And then butt the uh, butt that in together, like just like that. Now, as I was talking about, I want to reinforce that, so I'm going to use my elasticon piece and go right over it again where I just did. So I'm going to place it right here again, pull, go up and under, go all the way underneath, and butt that together. That's going to allow that ear to stay stretched. Now I have a little bit of a crease right here, so I'm going to take my scissors, cut this because it's excess tape anyway, and then have that uh, stay just like that. Now one last piece is that tip piece. So again, you start right here. I'm going to make sure that ear is nice and stretched, and then you're going to just do that again. Go, go that this direction, go back over, butt the ends, don't make anything tight. And then that's how the ear should look for the one ear. The next ear should be identically the same way. And then after that we brace it and we're done. So the next part is going to be the same method as this ear here, just on the other ear. Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, the next part is bracing the ear. Once we have the uh, two ears identically wrapped the same way, the whole goal is we want the ears to stand perfectly parallel and upright in a gold position like this. Because this is how perfect ears should stand when the dog is alert. So in order to achieve this, what you want to do is you want to get the piece of uh, tape and you want to go ahead and start with one of the ears as a... Uh, one of the ears to uh, to get it started. This is kind of tricky. Let me reposition the puppy over this way. So what I want to do is I'll just go over the tape that's already here. I'm going to go all the way to the back to the corner here just like this so that way it's going to allow that ear to stay straight. I'm going to hit this corner just like this and I put it together. So hit this corner, use your fingernail. Again, never make the ear tight. It should never be tight. So once you have a starting piece, just like this, now sit. You can then put the ears together. You can just do this by one person. You don't need two. If you have two, that's fine. But this can be done by one person. So now I'm going to go ahead and fold this over like this. So now that I have this starting point, I'm going to go ahead and then just place it to the other ear. And it's my job to determine proper parallel position. So you can make a noise. To me, that's pretty good. So now that I've done that, all I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process and go wrap around and hit that corner again. So now I'm going to turn her around. Sit. Exactly the same thing we just did with the other ear. This is why it's important you want to have a long piece to brace because if you don't place it correctly or if you don't have a long enough piece, you're not going to be able to achieve what you want and you got to start all over again. So I'm going to just go, this is perfectly, without making it too long or too short, this is perfect. So now all I'm going to do is go back over here, come over here, I'm going to hit this corner here. It's really important for position of the ear, you hit this corner and you put your fingernail there, fingernail, fingernail there to, uh, to lock that ear in the place you want. Now that this bubble right here, again, you just butt it just like this, you don't make anything tight. And now, I got two ears pos perfectly positioned based on visual uh, in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and sit her down again. Sit. 
Hang on, Puma. See, that's pretty good. But in order to keep these uh, ears from unraveling after wear and tear and playing and this and that, what I like to do is I made some elasticon tape like this right here and I'm gonna go over that corner part where I just uh, butt it together so what I want to do is sit see right here I'm gonna go ahead and place my place it just right here where I have that piece at and I'm gonna go ahead and overlap it with this sticky elasticon tape going the other direction and you get this part you can make tight because we're not on the ear it's on the tape itself and then all I'm doing is locking it in so that piece and that corner piece will not be able to come undone by doing this all you do again is do it right here and we're absolutely done and that's it let me uh, let me repeat that process let me get another piece So I'll go about this length here, it's pretty good. Again, uh, you can go this way. There's, the concept's the same. You can do it different directions, different ways, but I like to kind of start it this way up. Again, you wanna just hit this corner here. The whole purpose is to, to not allow that corner piece to come undone. Fold it over, make it nice and tight with your fingers. Now let me turn her around facing forward. Sit. Now, if you want to make this a little bit prettier, if, if the dog is going to get pictures, you could uh, then, because that wasn't a long enough piece, no big deal. You can just go back over it again. Not a big deal. Just place that just like this. Nothing wrong with uh, double protection to keep those ears from coming undone and out of place. I'm going to go underneath, back over, squeeze real tight, and I might as well just uh, put a little piece right there to kind of make it look similar and uniform. And that's basically all you do. And these should last for probably four to six days, depending on the dog, its activity level, the weather, and, uh, and how they look. At any time, if you ever smell any odors coming from the ear, that's, that's a sign that there's a problem internally and you want to get those ears down and checked out immediately. So now this is how it should look. Go ahead and step back. Puma. Fresh ear wrapping. She's not using her ears because if she was using her ears, you would see wrinkles in between her uh, ears right here like this. Let's see if I get her to use her ears. Watch. Cookie. Watch. Watch. Well, she's not using her ears a whole lot, but that's how they should look. And if she's using her ears, they would actually go in a little bit like this. But that's how it is. It'll keep those ears stretched, parallel, and that's all it is. Go ahead.